what I tend to find with uh, when it comes to mental health is that um, men are not really supposed to be seen uh, as having sort of issues with their like their own mind or or anything along those lines. Um, you know, growing up, um, the expectations you know for men, especially black men, you have to be strong, you have to be tough. Um, just you know, considering the elements of racism and um, a whole lot of oppressions that they're going to have to face. And so any element of weakness, um, I think, exacerbates the fact that men who are suffering with things like depression or uh, anxiety or panic attacks, um, they pretty much have nowhere to turn to, and they just get somewhat shunned off to the side if they display or even talk about things like that. Mm. Andrew, in your practice, what are some of the unique uh, issues that Black men face um, in society that maybe others don't? Well, it's an, an interesting sense of a lack of safety, sometimes mm -hmm. when it's in community, right? Like uh, Jermaine was saying, you're supposed to be strong, but then how do you how do you acknowledge that sense of a lack of safety to whether to go somewhere in conversation or just be yourself in a particular place and point of time. So we have that history of oppression and, and, and violence and aggression and things that is, it's part of our worldview, even though many of us might not have experienced a lot of that personal trauma, we still have it with us for generations. So it's got to go somewhere. So now we're at a place where I think there's a good opportunity to be grounded in a in, in a more open time where we can actually talk about what we're experiencing, where we can actually learn to understand how things have impacted us from the past so that we can move forward differently. You bring up a good point, Andrew, and I want to hear what you have to say, Jermaine, especially about talking. Um, you know, I think most wives would say their husbands don't talk very much. And in, in talking to Asante earlier uh, in the show, he talked about just the cultural uh, aspect of uh, in a black community, um, communicating how you're feeling, communicating that you might be suffering through depression aren't things that are normally done in the black community. Jermaine, what are your thoughts on that? It's hard to, um, especially when you there isn't an environment of trust and and openness a lot of the times if if something's happening um you know for example words words have a lot of power and so when you hear things like it's not a big deal or you know almost like suck it up type of attitude mm -hmm. uh towards somebody that's really dealing with something that's traumatic for them um it's really hard to to open up and it's it's a, it's a lot of layers uh so even when like for example if a black man's in a relationship an intimate relationship um for that partner it's hard to actually like really start opening up those layers as to why you know a black man or somebody in an intimate relationship um is suffering the way that they're doing um so it really takes a lot of patience um i think for black families it, it would behoove us to really start early as to allowing an environment where kids can openly speak in a respectful way, in a loving way, but not be afraid to express their feelings and really um, walk with them through their emotions. Because sometimes that's the piece that, that gets missing where if, for example, um, a black grade two uh, boy starts to cry, um, we need to walk with them and let them know, yeah, it is okay to cry. Right? and walk with them to see what is it or what are the triggers that made them so upset. Hmm. Andrew, we are seeing um, really scary suicides. They're approximately three times higher of, of men um, taking their lives than women. Um, a spike especially around 40 to 59 years old. Uh, and while we don't have specific um, statistics on black men, we are seeing an issue when it comes to men who are choosing to die by suicide, especially uh, middle age men. What are the warning? Like, this is obviously a warning sign. Uh, what are these issues that men are dealing with that are, are causing this spike, especially at this time of uh, in their lives? You know, it, it's interesting 
because with men and men in our community, you're going to miss one of the morning warning signs because that's typically how we are. We're, we're silent. We're quiet about things that trouble us. So whereas in some people you would notice a withdrawing, that's going to be absent. You're not going to notice that significant telltale sign. Um, one of the factors I think um, in all the cases where people who have attempted um, uh, suicide and um, are still here with us when we kind of talked that through, there was that sense of isolation. It was mm. the reality that this had been building for a long, long, long time. And it's not just as a result of one issue. So I think what Jermaine was talking about and what we all been talking about, communication is key. Healthy communication is also healing communication. And I think when we start to understand not just the not just the power of words, but the meaning of words and how that intersects with how we think, right? It's the thoughts that we have over and over and over that really get us stuck. It's the, it's the perspective that we have, that we hold. Because anybody that I've talked to once again, and I can even imagine the people who I haven't had a chance to talk to, there was a sense of powerlessness, an idea that I can't change this. And I am alone in this. There's no point, right? That's the internal dialogue. If we were able to hear that out loud, right? And then also know how to respond to that. Because just because we tell somebody, you know, there is a point, that doesn't change the fact that they think the way that they do, right? That's the whole beauty and the process of connecting with someone um, in a formal capacity who understands how thoughts work. And that's the beauty of getting that information out to people. Um, so we're not just waiting for people to come to us. We're trying to have the dialogue and move things to platforms where we can talk to people about how do you understand your thoughts? What does it mean when you feel this? What's the difference mm -hmm. between stress and what's the difference between anxiety? Because not having these is impossible because you are a human, but how do you respond to that? Right? How can you impact change in your personal body, your personal sphere, your professional sphere? It, it all comes down to what we understand about ourselves and how we choose to live. And we have a choice. But if we're not aware of what that choice is, if we're not empowered on how to use that choice, then it's as if we don't have it.